My name is Caroline Till. I am the co-founder of a research and design agency called Franklin Till. But more recently, I think our work at Franklin Till, as we're you know trying to move these big brands, we're working with people like Adidas, like IKEA, trying to take them towards more sustainable production processes. We realise that it's absolutely fundamental to have a multi-pronged approach and to bring different expertise and perspectives in, in a shared purpose. I work at London College of Fashion and I redesigned a unit that um, goes across 20 courses, at um, and master's courses as well. So it means that um, we get marketeers, we get makers and we get media students who are all collaborating in teams to answer or address a challenge. So the idea behind it is that these challenges are very live and it means that students are actually addressing things that are happening in the fashion industry at the moment, which is great for them. Um, and it also means with industry that um, they kind of open up their businesses to data, insights, all those things so that um, teams of students can actually come in and look and address what, what things are happening within their industry and what they can do to address those things. What I'm really interested in is making sure that young people and adults have the opportunity to understand what it means to collaborate when they're learning. When you go out in, into industry, you don't work that way. You never do. You always work with other people. And I think collaboration is going to be a big deal in, in, in just, well, not just in industry, but in, in education at some point moving up. What interests me about transdisciplinary design is how, how do we connect people from dis different disciplines who wouldn't ordinarily work together? How do we make that happen as well? And how do we encourage that? So my name is Moritz Waldemeyer. I run a small design studio here in London. Uh, we do innovative projects with light uh, and uh, we work in different industries. We enjoy uh, sort of being inspired in one place and maybe applying it in another place. Some of the projects we've done in the past, uh, we've worked in uh, the automotive industry, we've worked in music, uh, dressing people in light. Uh, we have done almost architectural size installation. We've done small products. Yeah, so my name's uh, Jason Holly. I'm the principal of Universal Design Studio. Um, I guess the easiest way to describe the practice, which probably plays into this, is uh, architecture and interiors. So again, we, we work across all sectors, hospitality, retail, workplace, residential, exhibition, and we do not have any definition within the studio of like, that is the retail team and that is the exhibition team. We make sure that we're always mixing up these teams to make sure that we've got different perspectives coming from different directions. Always to make sure that we've got this kind of base expertise in terms of what we're doing. Um, so my name is Nat Tsai, Audrey Chiesa, and I'm the founder of Faber Futures. We are um, an agency that is at the intersection of design and biotechnology. Um, I studied, uh, studied architecture um, before um, doing Caroline's course at Material Futures. Um, and that opened up possibility for, po possibilities for us to think about um, technology uh, as it relates to culture and design. Uh, and I was really interested in biotechnology um, as a key driver of our material futures. Um, so understood pretty early on that I wasn't a biotechnologist and so I needed to create the frameworks through which I could um, create um, uh, connections with people who uh, could bring different types of knowledges um, into the domain of des design and, and, and likewise the, the other way around. Started um, design uh, residency um, at University College London um, as a designer working in a synthetic biology lab, trying to understand and feel for um, how these two disciplines could collide. Faber Futures was started to um, try to upstream design into the lab. I understood that world, I understood the implications of having a designer at the early stage and how that might drive product innovation how that actually might drive uh, in the context of synthetic biology, uh, which is the engineering of living systems so that they can perform certain, um, um, they have certain performative qualities that are otherwise not found in nature. Um, and so we 
have worked in a policy context with the World Economic Forum to talk about how you need to understand design as being key stakeholders in the development um, of any kind of ro roadmap uh, for synthetic biology in any geographical context. Um, how do you do that? How do you start to understand that? We work with biotechnology companies who actually want to take design um, methods into, um, into the lab in a very um, uh, material way. And so we have been... Um, we created and um, programmed the Ginkgo Creative Residency. So I'm interested in when you're working at this convergence of discipline and, and sort of touching on this idea of language, how do you make sure that you still have a clear enough sort of shop window to, that people can understand what to come to you for, what, what types of commissions or collaborations? Uh, what I tend to do is to sort of hone the description or the job description always a little bit to the person I have in front of me. I, I try to kind of ad adapt what, what I'm saying to each person or potential client uh, and try to uh, like uh, 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 tailor a little bit uh, what the studio is to that person. One of the real dangers that we found when people have entered this sort of idea of kind of you know transdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary or however we describe it where people are you know Look, you know, looking outside the frame of reference of their, their immediate discipline, which is fundamentally important. The challenge was, and what, which we felt, was that we had seen that happen in many other instances, and then the dominant department, the one that makes money, basically starts, you know, <laughs> overpowering the other departments, and things, and the expertise in the other areas start to shrink because it's not seen as actually a profit centre. That's why, you know, this notion of transdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary is absolutely entrenched in everything that you do within Favour Futures. Can you tell us about some of the tools or, you know, obviously you probably have uh, challenges with, with vocabulary, with, um, you know, depth of expertise in specific areas. How do you start to bridge that so that you can get to a place that you can, you know, not just work together, but actually form new knowledge together? It's really challenging, um, and part of the reason why we started the Ginkgo Creative Residency was because we wanted to make it really apparent how hard it is to collaborate with you know, designers, um, with sci scientists in that context. In terms of syntax and semiotics, I, I think what we've learned um, is that being able to show rather than tell is probably um, the quickest way to get everyone on board not just showing people, but getting them involved in the making of um, has also been transformative. What are some of the biggest challenges to adopting a transdisciplinary design uh, approach? And, and I guess, Tiff, particularly from a, a student perspective, what does that mean for their future careers? Um, what we found is, you know, just moving sort of back a little bit with the, the whole idea of, you know, of, of getting people on board. I think, you know, when you have like a, a group of students in a room, some of whom have, have never collaborated with anyone before in their lives, and they, they just look at you thinking, what on earth are you going to get me what, to isn't do? Isn't it just an individual <laughs> practice? <laughs> yeah, just actually really? practice. So, and I think the whole unit was based around the premise of soft skill sets and how to unlock those and how to do that when you actually work in a collaborative and transdisciplinary way so the idea of soft skill sets is to look at your skills and attributes and obviously if you're working in a team of marketeers people who have media backgrounds and people who are makers and come together and, and do quite great things together it's about how you influence each other and what skills you're learning from each other as well as what you're bringing to the table and I think that's a really powerful thing you know to really unlock those soft skills because they're the skills that you need to be really successful in the creative industries no matter what industry it might be. How does one actually build a successful uh, team you know like one that actually works well together because as we know when you put a lot of people in, in a room together with different backgrounds it can be quite hard for them to you know align well i was gonna yeah i was gonna add into that because i think um it, it always felt to me that like friction actually is also a really important part of, of collaboration you know it's although we're talking about kind of how you can come together to find ways of having you know shared goals and values that you might then kind of bring you know bring to fruition through different disciplines but actually that you need friction, you know, you, you do need difference, you need uh, people to disagree and, but, you know, there's ways of disagreeing in a, in, a, in a productive way. So, again, it's sort of, for us, we're always looking out for, you know, people who are passionate about what they do and, you know, and want to put them with others who are passionate about what they do and understand that they believe what they believe 
and they are passionate about it, but someone else believes what they believe and they're passionate about it. And that's, that's fascinating, you know, how, how we can have different perspectives on this particular thing, you know, how do we, and finding that common ground really, or finding kind of that way forward is, is uh, yeah, it's fascinating. That keeps me going every day, I think, the uncertainty.